digital citizenship and just digital literacy is not an event. It's embracing a habit. It's embracing a, a way of embedding it into your everyday life. I think that, that early on, we thought if we give you a series of lessons, you'll be ready to be a great digital citizen. And, and what I think we've all realized over the years is that it's a mindset. It really is helping students build habits. And we don't build habits from you know, one-off events. We build habits by modeling them for our students, by being mentors and having conversations with them about their behavior, as well as just making sure that they understand and recognize that the work that they do every day to represent themselves online is going to be a part of their future for years and years to come. You're listening to the smartsocial.com podcast. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. This is our district talk segment where we interview district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media so those students can someday shine online. Now let's get back to the interview. Hi, I'm Ben Churchill, proud superintendent of Carlsbad Unified School District in Carlsbad, California. We're about 30 miles up the coast from San Diego, serving 11,000 students in 16 school sites. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Maureen Brummett, superintendent of Newington Public Schools. We are a suburb of Hartford, Connecticut, where there are seven schools and about 3,900 students. Hi, I'm Michelle Bourgeois. I serve as the Chief Technology Officer in St. Green Valley Schools. We are a school district here in Colorado, serving 33,000 students across 60 buildings and programs. We're located about 30 miles north of Denver in the beautiful Front Range area. How have you and your district been successful in increasing parent engagement to help keep students safe on social media? In terms of keeping students safe on social media, we've implemented something we call a parent university program. And we do regular parent universities where we invite local experts, folks who know and understand students who know and understand social media. And we talk to parents about the different platforms, the different dangers, but also the positives. We really work intentionally to make sure that our parents know and understand what students have access to. And we talk regularly and at length with an intentional focus on making sure that parents know and understand what the tools are, what the pitfalls are, and importantly, what the promises are. You know, I find that to be a bit tricky. A lot of times, Parents are not watching their kids online. Some of the incidences that we've kind of alluded to tonight or today have happened with mom and dad in the next room and a child's posting something threatening online or something not appropriate. So we have offered workshops, we've offered alerts, and we have policies posted everywhere. That is something that we do, um, I don't want to say struggle with, but we would love to have parents be more active in supervising their children online. Often they don't take notice until something bad has happened. I, I will give you an example. Recently, we were going to host a seminar on appropriate social media uses and all computer uses for, for a parent forum. And unfortunately, we had to cancel it due to low interest. So right now, I think parents think that everything's fine until it's not. And that's where we encourage them to be more involved. Now, I would say at the younger ages, it's probably more prevalent. As kids get older and have cell phones, perhaps there's a little less uh, supervision. And that is unfortunate because, again, kids are probably at home when they're posting things they should not do. You know, one of the things that we did uh, almost 10 years ago in St. Brandon is we started a committee called the ITAC Committee, Instructional Technology Advisory Committee. And we invited parents and teachers and administrators, as well as district staff to join us and really think about what are the actions and attributes we want to have in our classrooms that prepare students for their future? And so that deep parent engagement came from the beginning and helping them understand and appreciate the role that they have, but also the, the need that we have to help our students live in a world where their social presence is going to be a part of their life forever. The other thing that we've uh, done is we brought in a guest speaker and in fact, she's coming back again this spring to meet with us. Deborah Heitner um, wrote a book called ScreenWise. And so we brought her in to actually have a community forum with our parents, just to hear a perspective of someone who's done a lot of research. But her newest book, uh, Growing Up in Public, is one that really focuses on social media. So we're bringing her back again to again engage our parents and our, our administrators in a conversation around 
uh, what it means to be a student in an always-on, always-present digital world. Are there any stories that might come to mind about any social media incidents you've been able to get in front of or even perhaps avoid by being proactive? The way that we get in front of social media incidents is by being proactive. It's through our parent university program where we talk to and train parents on what's possible, what's available, what the pitfalls are related to social media. It's the development of culture and relationships on and off campus that help to keep our kids safe. We can be in front of possible negative social media incidents by working directly and intentionally with parents and by working directly and intentionally with students. Well, we have forged, you know, and I think it's part of that digital community. Many folks are very good partners. So we had a student who we believed had posted something online. It came to our attention from a gaming site. And from there, they alerted us that the gaming site, I guess they could check IP addresses and they were able to trace it right back to one of our students. So we could immediately get involved. It was a fairly threatening post, but through the quick work of all those involved, the gaming platform, our local PD, we were able to get to the heart of the matter very quickly and make sure there were no safety issues involved. So it is good to know that people in the broader community, in this case, a gaming platform, were really covering their bases and looking at things and, and recognizing that this could be a problem. But I think people know you got to take everything pretty seriously these days and not assume it's a joke. And at the end of the day, the student was just being a teenager. But for a while there, you don't know that until you uh, dig deep and get the information. So that collaboration is critically important, working closely with your local authorities and having a good technology department that has the ability to monitor using different platforms. The biggest challenge I think that we've been working hard is one that I think many districts are struggling with, and it's the, the TikTok challenge, recognizing that there are challenges that are put out for our students that encourage them to do things that maybe aren't in their best interest or in the best interest of the district. And so staying on top of those and actually using our advisory time in our high schools to have conversations with students about what do you think the motivation is behind these types of challenges? Do you think that they have your best interests at heart? And what do you think are the consequences if you choose to act in this behavior? So trying to get ahead of some of the things that we see coming out in the students' stream of social media and encouraging them to, to be really thoughtful and engaged participants in a conversation around who do you want to be and what do you want your presence to represent for our district and for your family and for yourself? What would your advice be to other educators and administrators to work together to create a culture of digital safety and responsibility in their schools? Educators and administrators can absolutely work together to create a culture of digital safety and responsibility. The first thing is that educators and administrators need to know what's out there. I was on a panel at AASA several years ago with the title, you don't need to be on TikTok, but you need to know what it is. We absolutely have to expose our teachers and administrators and other school-based staff to know and understand what's out there. That's the first thing. The second thing is we need to have clear expectations for students and staff on the use of technology. We need to know, define, and be clear and honest about what's allowed, what's not allowed, what's encouraged, what's expected. We need to communicate all of this clearly to students and parents. And, and then we need to bring our parents in as partners, and we need to model for our staff. I just think you have to build that culture of it. You have to make sure your technology is well supported, that your teachers are very well trained. We have technology education teachers in all of our schools, and they really do support teachers. We do a lot of training on different apps become available and really just create that supported culture of here's how to use the device as well. And in some cases, now that artificial intelligence is coming along, it can actually make your job easier if you leverage it in a positive way. And of course, COVID forced a lot of our teachers to up their technology game overnight. And some of them, it was challenging. Others was easy. So I think that if you can say anything good happened as a result of the pandemic, it's that people really became more tech savvy and found it can make teaching more engaging and it can make their life a little bit easier. thing that I think about when I think about giving advice to others, it's really to remember that 
digital citizenship and just digital literacy is not an event. It's embracing a habit. It's embracing a way of embedding it into your everyday life. I think that that early on, we thought if we give you a series of lessons, you'll be ready to be a great digital citizen. And, and what I think we've all realized over the years is that it's a mindset. It really is helping students build habits. And we don't build habits from one-off events. We build habits by modeling them for our students, by being mentors and having conversations with them about their behavior, as well as just making sure that they understand and recognize that the work that they do every day to represent themselves online is going to be a part of their future for years and years to come. What are your one to two biggest social media concerns for the future? I have a couple of social media concerns for the future. At the top of the list for me is privacy and safety. I'm concerned about bullying. I'm concerned about exposure to inappropriate content online. I'm concerned about the sharing of personal information. I'm concerned about the mental health impacts of social media use on youth. So that's the first big bucket of concern, privacy and safety. The second big area of concern related to social media is really around digital literacy and critical thinking. I'm concerned about misinformation online, and I'm concerned about how we teach students to know the difference between what's true and what's not. I'm also concerned about the echo chamber effect, that students may be exposed to things that amplify a particular message, and you end up in this echo chamber where you think everyone is thinking that same way. This is something that I think we have to tackle in school. And the sooner we get after it, the the better it's going to be for all of us. Our kids are ahead of the game all the time. Having a couple of key people on your staff that know what's up and coming and are able to keep track of it. And again, training the students about being safe. Tons of education around that at all of our levels, even as young as kindergarten. Our our one-to-one program goes down to kindergarten and making sure that you have to use this device in a way that's positive for yourself and for your classmates and your community. So we do start that educational component the minute they get their laptop or their Chromebook handed to them on day one of school of kindergarten. The things that I'm most concerned about when I think about our students in social media, it's the recognition that when we were students, we would do silly things and not necessarily think about the consequences they were going to have in our future life. You know, we could go and be goofy kids and do things that probably... Uh, if they were done and posted on YouTube today would would be a career ending event. So the thing I worry about the most for students is really the fact that they they have this obligation not just to think about the silliness of today, but what impact that might have on their future, because what you put online can live for an awfully long time. And then I think the other thing that I worry about is the belief that that sometimes we have as adults that we can protect, defend, prevent, some of the things that are going to happen online and not prepare our students well because we try to to shield them from that type of experience. And so for me, it's really recognizing both that students need to understand that this is the world they're going to get to live in and it's going to be with them for their life, as well as reminding parents and educators that we have to understand that part of our obligation is to teach students to live and thrive in this new digital world. Funding is difficult across the country. What advice would you give to other school districts to secure funding to create the resources that parents need? In terms of training and exposure to the tools and and apps that are out there, I don't think that has to cost money. We can crowdsource our expertise, for example, bring in local experts to talk to parents, bring in local experts to talk to our teachers. That shouldn't cost us anything. And I think we'll quickly see a lot of benefit from just free training and learning. Well, we have instituted here in Newington a five-year technology replacement cycle, and that's relatively new, but we used to kind of try to cobble together funds for technology, and you just can't do that if you want to maintain a robust technology format in your district. I mean, districts in the United States or even in Connecticut might have, you know, were a few steps back when when the pandemic hit and kids did not have a one-to-one device. If you want to maintain that type of fluidity with making sure your kids are up to date, you have to have a replacement cycle, much like you do for many different things, four-day equipment or other kinds of facility structures. So we have a set amount 
that I've advocated for that has been in the budget for a number of years. And then my technology director helps me to decide what are some of the priorities, whether it's infrastructure or new monitors or any type of new technology coming along. You know, I have a committee that helps me look at that. And from there, we prioritize. But it is, you know, in a district my size, we're spending about at least $800,000 a year on technology and related infrastructure. There are two things that I think about that we've done well here. One is leverage your students. We have our high school students who actually formed a group who actually go out and meet with uh, our younger students and talk about their use of digital tools. They actually go out and work in senior centers too, because I think that's another group who needs uh, a little bit of support when it comes to learning how to navigate the digital world. I would definitely say engage your students. They are going to be more creative, uh, more on top of what other students need than anyone else. And then the other is to, to reach out to your community. Businesses in your area have an obligation and, and an opportunity to think about this as their future workforce and give them the opportunity to be a part of that solution because the students that you're educating today are going to be the employees that they're hiring tomorrow. Thanks for listening to our SmartSocial.com podcast. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. This was our district talk segment where we interview school district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media so those students can someday launch into their future by shining online. This episode was brought to you by our SmartSocial.com VIP program. It's called the Very Informed Parent Program, which helps you engage your students with teen-led video lessons. Stay one step ahead with our premium parent newsletter and discover hidden features on trending apps on teens' phones and our 54-plus live parent and student-friendly events every single year. You can click on the link below to chat with one of our team members if you want a free pass to our VIP program to support your community with our smartsocial.com resources. And if you're a district leader who has a success story, we would love to feature you on a future episode. You can click the link below to reach out. Thanks so much for listening, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Have a great day.